The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld, there he was in torment. He raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. What is your greatest fear? I remember, I don't remember where I was reading it, but I was reading an article recently when it was talking about how our world is so driven by fear. Our men's group this morning had a great discussion around that. It's a Father Capon's men, a new men's group that we started, and how the culture is just feeding into this fear. And, and then it, it per, persuades us. Uh, it has a way of, of almost crippling us in our fear. And I think what the biggest fear for most people, and maybe some might be a little different, but if you're anything like me, I think the biggest fear is death. Something that we come face to face with in our gospel reading today in the gospel of Luke is death. And the reality of death, the reality that all of us are going to die someday, so why is it, why is it something that we fear so much? I think the reason why we fear death so much is because we're probably afraid of uh, just exactly where our gospel reading was going, huh? Where are we going? Are we going to be like Lazarus? Or are we going to be like the rich man? Jesus puts these two in two different categories there, and he basically says what they did here on earth is what gained them what their reward is. And that's what fosters, that stirs up in us that fear. Because we recognize that we're sinners. And we're not always perfect. And we don't always do what we're supposed to do. Right? But I think the other thing that this gospel reading is getting us to look at is it's not always just the things that we do. Huh? Many people will say, well, I'll probably go to heaven. I'm I'm a pretty good person. I haven't killed anybody. Right? I'm, a, I'm a good person, I'm a good parent, I'm a good husband, wife, father, mother. I'll, I'll probably have a pretty good chance based on what we do. But what is this parable talking about? You notice the rich man, what did he do? He didn't really say that he did anything wrong. But what he didn't do is what he was condemned for. What he didn't do 
What this is getting into is what we understand of there are sins of commission in our lives and there are sins of omission in our lives. We can commit a lot of different sins and a lot of different things and, and, and feel uh, God's mercy and God's forgiveness, thanks be to God, for the sacrament of confession. But a lot of times we fail to mention the things that we have omitted the things that we know as Christians that we should be doing, but we're not doing. Things that we didn't do. That's what this rich man is suffering torment for in the gospel today. Not the things that he did, not the sins that he committed. It doesn't give us any information about what he committed. But it gives us lots of information around what he omitted in his life. He omitted by not paying attention to Lazarus laying, suffering, starving, sick at his door. He went so far as to ignore him to the point that even dogs paid more attention to him as they licked his sword. So it's an encouragement, I would say, for us to pay more attention in our lives to the things that we might be omitting things that we should be calling to mind, that we should be doing, things that we should be paying more attention to in a sense. Things that we have omitted that we maybe need to start taking up in our lives. This goes back to um, the second reading today from the letter, first letter to Timothy. He says, Man of God, pay attention, persevere and pursue righteousness, justice, patience, love, these are the things, you notice what those, all of those things are not about, about self, things that we can commit a sin against, but they are sins of, uh, that, that help us to stop omitting things in our lives. Because what was the biggest thing that this man in the gospel, the rich man, did is he was paying so much attention to himself, he omitted the things that he should have been doing. But when we pay attention to patience, and love, and endurance, and justice, and peace, and these things that Paul's talking to Timothy about, we naturally begin to think about the other. We naturally begin to pay attention to the things around us that we normally might have omitted or just glanced by or forgotten about. Think about this for a moment. What do you think on this Lazarus is, is looking up to heaven and asking Abraham to ask this Lazarus. This rich man is looking up to heaven asking that Lazarus could just dip his finger into water. He's tormented so much he just wants a little tip of a finger on his tongue. But just imagine for a moment if he got a second chance. If he actually got to go back. What do you think he would change about his life? What do you think he would have done different? Maybe he might have paid more attention to Lazarus at his doorstep. Maybe he might have been more active with the community and the people around him, noticing more the people who needed him most. Not omitting so much these things, but paying more attention to them instead of less attention to himself. What about us? The truth is, is that we have been given a second chance. Our Lord Jesus Christ has laid down his life for us and we celebrate the remembrance of that on this altar today with Jesus reminding us, you have a second chance. You have another chance to make things right. You have another chance if you've been omitting things in your life, omitting things that you know that you're supposed to be doing. Love of neighbor, taking care of those who are in most need, forgiveness patience with our loved ones and the people around us, we have another chance to change. So what would we do different? Maybe we might treat people with more respect or dignity or love. Maybe we might be more active even in our parish community, recognizing that God has given us so much and he gives us this chance to make a difference. Because as the gospel reading says, there's a between heaven and hell, there's a great chasm that has been put there so that 
we have to do what we need to do for heaven now. It's not like we can wait until the end and say, okay, now it's time for me to make a change. The gospel is really encouraging us to make these changes now. To take this opportunity that Jesus gives us in this Eucharist now to make a difference. To make a change for the now. To not live like we heard them living in the book of the prophet Amos as he was condemning the Israelite people for the, all of the sinful abominations that they had done after, even after the Lord had done so much for them. Jesus, in a sense, is our chance. Jesus, in a sense, is the way that we can make a difference in our lives, that we can change the way that we have done, been doing things, the ways that we can stop omitting things in our lives and stop paying so much attention to the things that we have committed, the sins that we have committed that we confess in confession, and maybe even starting to think about what have I been forgetting? What am I supposed to do as a Christian that I've not been doing? What am I called to that I have not been living up to? The second reading today says to strive for heaven, to strive for eternal life which we have been called through our baptism. How have I not been doing that? And how will I take the chance that Jesus Christ gives me today in this Eucharist? in his body and blood, saying to us, change your way. Live your life for the kingdom. Live your life as if today were your last. Then we're not suffering like the rich man. Then we're living like Lazarus. Then we're living for the kingdom, taking up whatever sufferings might come in this life as Lazarus did, offering those up to God, and paying attention to what matters the most, what is right here and right before us now, because it is now when we earn salvation. It is now that salvation is, uh, is wrought about in our lives, it is not necessarily earned, but it's recognized in each other. It's recognized in the way that we pay attention to what is needed the most. So how will we pay more attention in our lives to the things that we have been omitting, the things that we have been neglecting, the people that we have been neglecting, so as to focus more in our lives on eternal life.